our people. Hail victory! Protests over Richard Spencer's visit turning violent. White nationalist Richard Spencer is speaking at the University of Florida. The Governor Rick Scott did declare a state of an emergency. Pepe has become kind of a symbol. Africans have benefited from their experience with white supremacy. If Africans had never existed, world history would be ex almost exactly the same as it is today. Yeah, you just keep because we saying, are the genius that drives it. Things. You don't and get to tell me yeah, I do, what I actually, will be. Because my name's Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer, founder of the so-called alt-right movement. Their movement is broadly referred to as alt-right. Richard Spencer, a prominent member of the alt-right. What does Richard Spencer actually believe? People have called you a Nazi. Uh, are you a Nazi? Oh, no, I, I, I'm not a Nazi. I'm not a neo-Nazi. I'm not any of those things. Now, you say you're not a neo-Nazi or a Nazi, and yet in the event that you had right around the time of Trump's inauguration, mm -hmm. there were a whole bunch of guys who were giving the Nazi salute. You saw them. Sure. You didn't repudiate them. No. So you thought it was OK to have some Nazi salutes that in response to what you were saying. Um, I utter the words, hail Trump, hail our people, hail victory. Doesn't hail Trump sound unnervingly like Heil Hitler? Uh, sure, it was, I was being isn't very that why provocative. You, is, you were being provocative. Isn't it fair to say that, you're, that you know that there is a, a media left out there that is looking to pin neo-Nazism on the right and by doing this kind of thing, you're actually playing a part in a script. You're actually giving them what they want, which gives you a lot of media attention. It serves their script, but it actually hurts Trump. Uh, no, I don't think the alt-right has hurt Trump in the slightest bit. Would it be fair to say that you are not just against illegal immigration, but immigration, period? I would be actually happy to open the door to white South Africans. Would you be happy with an immigration policy that basically said, we want people from New Zealand, uh, Australia, uh, white guys from Europe, uh, Iceland, and South Africa. We don't want that many people from, if any, Barbados or Bombay. Yes. Now, this seems very different than, than Trump. And by that, I mean, isn't it true that the line that Trump is drawing is not a racial line, but a line between the legal and the illegal immigrant? He's, he's made a difference between the illegal and legal, sure. But I ultimately don't support that. Trump was quoted in the paper as saying, if there's an Indian guy working in Silicon Valley and his visa runs out and we have to send him home, that's a loss. That's something we should try to prevent. You disagree? I do disagree with that. The H-1B visa program has been totally detrimental to white people. In Richard Spencer's world, what would you do with non-white immigrants who are here? Mm -hmm. A good example would be me. I'm a naturalized US citizen. Would you send me home? I hope that we can begin to pursue a new policy of re-immigration. And that would be about allowing people to go home again. I mean, I hear you echoing a white Malcolm X philosophy. Is it fair to say as a generality and as a, a succinct way to put it that you believe in segregation of the races? We do believe in separation, standing on our own feet, among our, among our own kind, and solving our own problems. And that's the only way you'll get a solution to the vital race problem in this country. Mr. Muhammad teaches us to love our own kind and let the white man take care of himself. And so if you and Malcolm X were at the table, you'd get along just fine. I think we could have a respectful dialogue if Malcolm X were at the table. Do you agree that what you're articulating is a philosophy that was very prevalent among really progressive Democrats in the early 20th century. I, I am sure there are instances in which left-wing thinkers or entities adopted nationalism. What it means to be on the right, what it means to be a conservative, is actually deeply collectivist. It is not individualistic Pause at for all. So as I would say as a conservative, I'm conserving the philosophy and the principles of the American founding. You're not. I've been critical of the American founding and throughout my writings, my career. So sure. what's, what was wrong with the American founding? This notion that we will create a state to protect human rights, 
or, or individual rights. I mean, no state in the history of world, the world, including the United States, was ever created like that. So all men are created equal, true or false? False, obviously. What about the idea no that- No one actually believes that. I mean, seriously, no one believes that. The idea that, let's say, we have a right to life, true or false? A right, I don't think we have rights to really anything. I don't think we should ever pledge allegiance or worship legal documents. And would you agree that at the end of the day, it is the individual who serves the state and not the other way around? There are duties that we have to the state. But this but notion of a limited government, which, you know, as you know, the founders saw the government as the enemy of our rights. Uh, in other words, Not think, really. well, look at That's the Reaganism. Bill, let's look at the Bill of Rights. Congress shall make no law doing this and Congress shall make no law doing that. So our rights, our First Amendment right, our Second Amendment right to own a gun, our Fourth Amendment right, are seen as protections against a government. No individual has a right outside of a collective community. You have rights, not eternally, or given by God or, or by nature. Who, who or gives them to us? You have them because you're a part of this community. Ultimately, the state gives those rights to you. So the state is the source of rights, not the individual. It simply is. What, what would be your take on, say, Reagan? I do not think that he was a great president. Who's your favorite president? There, there is something about uh, uh, Jackson. There's something about Polk as well, someone who only served one term. But I mean, Jackson and Polk, as you know, both Democrats. Uh, party, I mean, party is just the, the vessel that, that one uses. I mean, I mean, Jackson's the founder of the Democratic Party. You can find perhaps elective affinities, uh, perhaps kind of ironic affinities between myself as an identitarian and, and a progressive Democrat from the, the 1920s or something. Have you seen the movie Birth of a Nation? Uh, yes, I have. What did you think of it? Uh, it's an amazing film, one of the most important films ever made. Certainly a, a racialist component to that. It appealed to many Americans, including many presidents. Right, well, well, that's my point, is it, that a progressive Democrat, Woodrow Wilson, shows that movie in the White House to the cabinet, and this leads to a kind of Klan revival around the country. So you see why I'm placing you in that tradition? Because those are, that's your team. Uh, if that's progressivism, then I guess I'm a progressive. Uh, I'm, f I'm fine with that. Uh, international socialism. Uh, I'm, to be honest, uh, I, I'm not totally opposed to socialism when, when done right. Uh, I think we actually should use the government to benefit ourselves, the people of this country. I think we should have a national health care system. I think we should quadruple national parks. I think we should make this world a better place, and I think government has a role to play in that. Now, there's very little on which Spencer and Trump actually agree. Trump's a flag-waving patriot who cherishes the American founders. Spencer isn't and doesn't. Trump's a free market capitalist. Spencer prefers a strong centralized state regulating markets and dispensing entitlements. Trump wants to keep illegals out so legal immigrants and citizens, whether white, black, or brown, can thrive. No matter where they come from, no matter what faith they practice, they form a single unbreakable team. That's what we are. We're a team. As a nation, we're a team. Spencer wants only white immigrants. Trump believes that rights come from God. No matter what the color of our skin or the place of our birth, we are all created equal by God. Spencer's an atheist who believes our rights come from the government. They call him alt-right, but he's not on the right. He's not a conservative. He's a tool of the media to pin the white supremacist tail on the Republican elephant. He's part of the big lie.